Okay, in this problem, we're asked to consider a ruled surface parameterized by r of theta t is equal to a of theta plus t times b of theta. And a and b are continuously differentiable. And we want to show that r is regular at the point 0, 0. If and only if b of 0 doesn't equal 0 and a prime of 0 is not a scalar multiple of b of 0. Okay, so to show the first direction, we'll suppose r is regular. And then we want to show that that implies that b of 0 doesn't equal 0, and a prime of 0 is not a scalar multiple of b of 0. So what does it mean for R to be regular? Well, that means that A and B are continuously differentiable, which we know. And um, the partial derivatives are with respect to theta. times some, uh, some constant u plus some constant v times r with respect to t equals 0 if and only if u and v are equal to 0. So this means that u and v are equal to 0 are the only solutions to this equation. So we want to prove that b of 0 doesn't equal 0. So We'll suppose to the contrary that b of 0 does equal to 0 and see what happens. And so if b of 0 equals 0, we know that this is, well, let's first uh, actually calculate what the partial derivative of r with respect to theta and t are. So we get. Partial derivative r with respect to theta is a prime of theta plus t times b prime of theta. Partial derivative of r with respect to t is just b of theta. So we want to evaluate these at the point 0, 0, since we know that r, we're, assume, we're assuming that r is regular at the point 0, 0. So we can just substitute these thetas with zeros. And similarly, the t's with zeros. So we see that this second term in r theta turns to 0. And we have that the partial derivative of r with respect to theta is a prime of 0. And the partial derivative of r with respect to t is b of 0. OK, so we can go ahead and plug this in. So we have u times u times a prime of 0 plus b times b of 0 equals 0 is only solved with u equals 0, v equals 0. And now we're supposing that b of 0 is equal to 0, so we can go ahead and plug that in again into this equation. So we see that we have u a prime of 0 equals 0, and that's that's true for all v, since b of 0 is 0. Now let's let u equal to 0. And that satisfies this equation. So we know that if b of 0 is equal to 0 and u is equal to 0, this equation is always true. But that means that v doesn't necessarily have to be equal to 0. But our supposition is that v has to equal 0 if, in order to solve this equation. 
So we know that there's some sort of there's a contradiction, and we know that our assumption that b of zero equals zero is false. So we know that b of zero doesn't equal zero. Okay. Now we want to show that a prime is not a scalar multiple of b of zero. So again, we'll suppose to the contrary, and we'll say let's say a prime of zero. Let's suppose that a prime of zero does equal some constant. Um, I'll, I'll denote this k1 times b of zero. So if that's true, then we can go back. and plug in for our a prime of zero. So we have u u times k1 times b of zero plus v times b of zero equals zero is what our equation transforms into. But now we can see we could solve pretty easily, but you can also just kind of see it. If we let v equal negative uk1, we plug that in, we see that we get uk1 b of 0 minus uk1 b of 0 equals 0. So that's true for all u. And since our constant k is um, true, we also know that this is true for some u not equal to 0. But our supposition was that u equals 0 and v equals 0 is the only satisfying, the only way to satisfy this equation. But we've just shown that um, if u, or if a prime of 0 is a scalar multiple of b of 0, then we can choose some u, or we can choose some v as negative u k1 and we have a solution. So that's a contradiction. And we know that a prime of 0 is not a scalar multiple of b of 0. So we've shown that if we suppose that r is regular, then both of these are true. So that completes our forward direction. And now we'll go ahead and do the reverse. Okay, so for the reverse. We're going to suppose that B does not, B of zero doesn't equal zero and that a prime of 0 is not a scalar multiple of b of 0. And we want to show that r is regular. So we know already it's given to us that a and b are continuously differentiable. So we want to show that for the equation u times a prime of 0 plus v times b of 0 equals 0, that the only solutions are when both u and v are equal to 0. So again, to remind you that we got this equation by making uh, a linear combination of our partial derivatives. So we know that b of 0 doesn't equal 0, and a prime of 0 is not a scalar multiple. And we want to show that u and v both have to be 0. So let's suppose that one of them is not. Let's say u is not equal to 0. Now we can take our v times 
times b of 0 and bring it to the other side, and we get u times a prime of 0 is equal to negative v times b of 0. Since u is not equal to 0, we can divide both sides by it. But now we have that a prime of 0 is a scalar multiple of b of 0, namely negative v over u. And that's a contradiction because we supposed from the beginning that a prime of 0 is not a scalar multiple. So, so we know that our supposition that u doesn't equal 0 is false. So that means that u does equal 0. So now we can go ahead and plug that into our equation. We get the first term turns to 0, and we get v times b of 0 equals 0. And right away we can look at our, our um, given information for the reverse direction. We know that b of 0 doesn't equal 0. That means that b equals 0. So we've showed that if we assume that b of 0 doesn't equal 0 and a prime is not a scalar multiple of b of 0, that given a linear combination of the partial derivatives, the only solution to it equaling 0 is when both u and v are equal to 0. So that shows that r is regular and completes the proof.